I'm inviting us this morning, get ready, to stretch and grow and expand and become even the next greatest version of yourself because it's time. It's time. We're ready to grow. I, we live in a universe, an evolutionary universe, that only knows to become more and more and more. And that's what we're called to do. When life seems heavy and we seem to be in a canyon of disillusionment, it's time for us to remember what, what life is. You heard that beautiful power in the music. Life is infinite energy infused with limitless creative imagination. And I want you to say, Whoo! I mean, that's a big deal. It's, when we said anything's possible, it is. Now, this has been a tough week because when things are ready to expand and grow, and you know, we have a solar eclipse tomorrow. The first full solar eclipse in 99 years. And it's a time where the energy is demanding us to be more of ourselves. It's demanding us to push a giant reset button in any place that we're off center, not standing on the principles that we know are good and right and true, to reset ourselves to be more of ourselves. What perfect timing. And what perfect timing that we're on the 15th tablet of our 16 stations of the cosmic Christ, which is that one power. That's what the cosmic Christ is. It's that one power for good that Virginia read about so beautifully this morning. Well, this tablet uh, by the artist uh, Ulrich Javier uh, Alemis shows the ascension. Now you have to look closely at it. In the middle there is a body. Now this ascension is not about our physical body ascending to a new plane. This is about our consciousness moving to a greater acceptance of the power for good. And you see that the little feet are on the ground, which to me means we don't have to be perfect to ascend in consciousness that we can still be having this human experience and making all our mistakes and foibles and we can still keep transcending in consciousness. And you can see the curls and the movement which tells us that this is a spiral evolution of consciousness. We're moving in circles. And the labyrinths on the two sides also tell us that this is a journey of life, that we're always growing and moving upward. That's our goal. Ernest Holmes in the Science of Mind textbook tells us our soul, and I want you to feel that, our soul is on a pathway of endless and ever-expanding experience, taking with us all that we have learned. We get to siphon what we've learned and take it with us. All the best that we've learned comes with us. And every experience we have, whether it's joyful or painful, happy or sad, every experience is teaching us to transcend and move upward to that consciousness of unity and oneness. And he goes on to say, we are continually ascending upward bound from glory to glory. It's about the power of our mind. You know, the power for good is ever present. Present. When Ernest Holm had his radio show and his television show, he would always start by saying, there's a power for good in this universe greater than we are, and we can use it. Because we have to remember, the power is there. You know, I think the world right now is crying out for God. But if we can't find God, guess who moved? Think about it. I mean, we, every single person is a center of God consciousness. We're all in this together. If we can't find it, if we're crying out for it, it's not because of life's willingness to give to us. We've been given everything we need. It's not about that willingness. It's about our willingness to accept that good. 
And what it seems to me is many of us have spent so much of our precious sacred time dividing life and ourselves and the world into unrelated segments. And we spend so much time in this divisive division looking at things that are different. We forget that we are one stupendous, magnificent whole. And when we divide things, when we take this interdependent, gorgeous universe in which we live, and we divide it up and separate it, that's when hate has the soil to grow. That's when we see this divisiveness, when we see man's inhumanity to man, when we've separated things and forget of this interdependence and that we belong to each other and we divide things up and we forget. And then this hate starts growing. But what we need to remember is love attracts, hate repels. Yet when you and I stand so firmly on our principles of life, that we are one, that God is good, that life is good. Whatever we, we, we're on this eternal journey, however we stand in that, we can make a stand for what is right and good. And I know that right now we're being shaken awake. We're being called to make a greater stand for something wonderful. It's no, it doesn't work any longer if we keep quiet and just, well, I know what's right and true and good. Do you? We can't do that anymore. We've got to speak our truth. I was really shocked with myself. Well, I've been shocked with myself many times, but this is just the most recent one. I was shocked. We were at a beautiful dinner party with some friends, and the friends had family, and the family had some other friends, and beautiful people, a doctor, a nurse practitioner, a marriage family, really counselors, a couple of ministers, um, you know, all beautiful, but the conversation tilted, and one family member got, I don't even know the word to use it, attacking another family member because of opposing beliefs. And everyone was frozen silent, except me. <laughs> and I said, stop! This is not how healing happens. We have to listen to one another. We're allowed to think differently, to be different, to be diverse, but we can't fight one another in the process. We have to learn to listen. We have to stop arguing and debating. Now, I was on the debate team for years and years and years. I'm not on it anymore. Well, maybe sometimes, but not, not intentionally. But I listen to the news because I like to hear what side they're picking. Because boy, when you're on a debate team, you've got to be prepared to debate on either side of an issue at any time. You've got your little box of you know, um, proof, ha, news, proof, whatever it is. And you've got to be able to, do, to debate at any time. But we have to stop debating one another. And we have to start listening to what is right. We have to use this time of the solar eclipse to really deepen our look at ourselves. You know, biases are taught when we're very, very young. And many of us don't even know what they really are until we're confronted with them. We need to take time, as Virginia said so beautifully, to tap into that power that's in us that knows the truth. We can't be fighting it anymore and then have the courage to stand and act on what is good. Um, when we take the time to tap into that power, we'll find that we become very, very curious. Hmm, what's possible here? What is today have for me? How can I be used in this moment? We start looking at life in a very, very different way. Now, how many of you are curious? I mean, we're all curious. We're born to be curious, but we got to check. Are we curious for trivia and gossip? 
Well, who isn't a little bit? Come on. We, you know, a little bit. But what we really want to be curious, we want to be curious about what's possible, about this creative energy I talked about and how we can use it for good. You know, the problem with pain and violence Boy, if we call it hate, if we call it anger, if we, whatever we call it, it not only can hurt on a physical level and cause damage, but hate and violence, whether it's in words, can be physical, emotional, and spiritual. And that pain has memory. And if we're not doing our spiritual work. Yes, we need to go out in the world and take action and, and speak our truth and set things right the best we can. But we need to take time to really get into that core because this pain has memory. And if we don't take time to do our spiritual work, we can slip back into it. This Friday, the past Friday, uh, August 18th, Unbelievable was the 25th anniversary, so to speak, of our daughters trans transcending this plane. And Kirk was sitting on the couch early, about 6 in the morning, and when I got up, I said, hello, and I said, how are you? And he said, I didn't sleep last night. And I realized that as much as we heal, that our body remembers the pain. Our body remembers the loss. Our soul remembers. Thank God we have the tools, the spiritual tools, to recognize the pain and honor it. It's not about ever diminishing pain, saying it doesn't exist. We can't deny it. But what do we do it? That's when the ascension comes in. So we took time to pray, to think of what was good, to remember, to remember the things we lost, but also to appreciate the things we gained. That's the ascension that happens. When we have the power to take what is painful and hurtful or wrong or bad and remember that love is the thing that heals, that when we remember the good and the light and the true, we have the spiritual practices to remember, no matter if we can't, if we can't see something, that there's always something more at work. I think we need bigger stories, don't you? A bigger story about life. I know I do. So when I see things, sometimes um, I know I try to look at the bigger stories, and I've had several people this week come to me and talk about, oh my gosh, this is, there's so much drama in my life, and so much this, and so much this. Well, let's take a step back and look at the bigger story. What's really going on here? What wants to be born? What wants to be revealed? What wants to happen right now? We need to take a look at that. What I know is, as Virginia read so beautifully, that this power that's within each and every one of us, it's not in some of us, it's in all of us. There's no one that is better than anyone else. We are all needed right here, right now, and we are all wanted. There are no parts that don't matter. We're all here because we're needed and wanted. How's that? Let's, I, I think we should repeat that. I like that. You know, I like to feel needed, do you? I like to feel wanted. I like to feel that I'm original. So I think we should say that. I would just, I am needed. I am wanted. I'm an original. There's no one like me. Don't say thank God after that. There's no one like me. Thank you, God for that because I just remember when I was teaching we had a big poster on the wall that said God doesn't make junk <laughs> only things that matter we're here because we matter we make a difference we are important so this is Healing Sunday and oh, this also comes from um, Ernest Holmes he says God saw fit to make us we belong, we are needed. Life would be incomplete without us. Some of us are just too spiritually a 
forget the word. Um, it's not humble, but humble, too spiritually humble. We should be physically humble, emotionally hum humble. We should be humble in the world, but not sp phys spiritually humble. Not spiritually humble. We need to stand in that power. We need to live that. He goes on to say, we are to stand in all our power, our love, our commitment to life, and to one another. Meister Eckhart, that beautiful 13th century Catholic mystic, said, God delights in watching your soul expand. I want you to ask yourself, where am I expanding today to be a greater presence in the world, to be a light of connection? I want you to, I'm just going to invite you to close your eyes right now, to uh, unwrap yourself so you can truly touch that power within because for balance in our life yes we need to be curious we need to act we need to take a stand and every single day every day daily we need to unite in quiet and be alone to activate that power for good that power for love that is within us. And remember that power for good that is greater than we are is here for us always, never against us. If we need healing, that power is here for healing. If we need happiness, tapping into the power ignites the joy and happiness of life itself, that ever-expanding good. If we need more supply and abundance to flow in our life, the universe provides every good thing in abundance. We simply are invited to be open to it. So right now, as we recognize and know and activate that power for good, that power for love, that power that is light, that is healing, that is joy within us right now in this moment, I simply invite us to be open and available to be in the flow of God's infinite grace, recognizing and knowing that within every single problem, either we have individually or collectively, the answer is inherent, the solution is inherent, the creative possibility is inherent in every single situation right here and right now. And as we quiet down, as we tap into that power for good, we take a step into the light, into love, into unity, into oneness, into possibility, into joy right now. And I'm just inviting us right now in this moment as we take a step, a step forward, that we recognize what old beliefs outdated stories might be the strings and chains that keep us tied down from completely ascending into a consciousness of wholeness and oneness and light. It's time in this moment as we truly breathe in the love and grace of God to let go, to let God, to be used, to be love, and to share all that we are, all that we are meant to be. Take a nice deep breath. Let healing wash over you now, that light of spirit as it's activated and like a fountain just covers you and all of us in that beautiful, the white sparklies of infinite energy, creative potential, and unexpand completely expanded good. Let that be the truth right now. I'm going to just invite you to breathe and just to close this day, this healing day right now. I just invite you to say with me, I stand in God's infinite grace. I stand in God's infinite grace. I release my chains, I release my chains. The, old the old stories, the beliefs that don't work for me anymore, the that don't work for me. and I let the light of love be my truth. Right now, this minute, with all of you, here we go. I bless you all.
Oh, we all can bless each other. That's right. We oh, That's a good one. I love that one. We bless each other. And I just know this day is a potent day. And I know tomorrow, you remember, it's a time to reset into love, light, and infinite goodness. I see it done. I bless you in that. I just say thank you, God. And so it is.